Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I've got two wines from uh, the Grave Appellation in Bordeaux in front of me. Um, and um, one of them's from 2011, which was a di challenging vintage, I think is the uh, technical term. And one's from 2010, which was a lovely vintage. Let's see whether they live up to uh, those vintage billings, because I don't know, I, I, I always have this thing about um, about vintages. I would much rather, I, I compare it with, with chefs. What would you rather have? Would you have uh, a great chef, a meal made with great ingredients, but by a bad chef, or a meal made from so-so ingredients by a great chef? I'd, I'd go for the second one every time. So um, yes, it's important that the vintage is good, but uh, it's probably more important that the person who's actually turning those grapes into wine is good. Uh, anyway, that was a bit of a build-up. First wine is Chateau Haute Corneau uh, Grave 2011. Uh, let's give it a whirl. The slightly cedary um, character here. Uh, the, the fruit feels like there's a, a, a slight jammy edge to it, as if some of the fruit's been picked a little bit too ripe. Um, uh, from what I remember, Merlot was did okay, um, uh, but uh, Cabernet so it, it, there was, there was a, rather a bit, bit, bit of rain around at vintage time. Um, I'm, I'm not up on my Bordeaux vintages, apart from the ones that, that there are some that really stand out, like 2009, 2010. But um, don't smell any uh, hints of rot or anything. Don't smell anything that, uh, that suggests it's going to be green. It smells like it's going to be inviting food friendly, but maybe a little bit on the simple side. It's okay. Um, there is this fleshy side. Uh, lurking in the background, there is this uh, little slight bitter greenness, as if some of the fruit um, maybe uh, got a little bit uh, either affected by just a touch of rot uh, or didn't ripen quite as much as it should have done. But it's not too gawky. Uh, there is this sweet, fleshy, uh, ever so slightly roasted character about the, 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 the plummy berry fruit, but um, it's, it's okay. It's okay, don't mind that at all. Uh, right, uh, second wine. Uh, so that was 2011. This is 2010 Chateau Maillard. And um, I I'm not quite sure of the, the price difference or of the grape mix difference. Uh, they don't say anything like that on either back label, but uh, let's just give it a whirl. Actually, one of the things I notice as soon as I pour it out, um, it's um, it's a much younger colour. The, the the previous one wasn't going brown or anything like that, but um, here it's a more uh, it's still got its ruby hues about it. Anyway, let's give it a sniff. And the fruit smells much fresher here, fresher, cleaner, brighter, um, more vivid black currants. Uh, still, there's still a little bit of the um, uh, the, the the red berries in, and black berries in there. Um, but it, yeah, it feels like there's going to be an extra layer of uh, freshness about this. Um, in terms of alcohol, yeah, it's weird. This is slightly lower in alcohol from the, um, the, the, the greater vintage. It feels like somebody has wanted to make a fresh wine rather than something that's going to uh, try and, uh, uh, yeah, try and not sledgehammer you into, into submission. But um, they, they don't mind something being, having that a little bit of leafy freshness here. It's younger, it's fresher, it's perkier. Um, I mean, it, it, the oak corner wasn't wasn't bad, but here you sense a wine that's still uh, coming out of its shell. The oak corner I'd want to drink pretty soon. Here, uh, it's got this uh, healthy leanness. Uh, you, you, the tannin is there. There's a chewiness about the tannin, uh, but there's enough flesh wrapped around it. I reckon if they uh, they they probably could have pushed it and picked it um, a week or two later and got a fleshier wine, but would it have been a better wine or just a bigger wine? Uh, I like it at this stage and um, it also feels like, um, whereas the Oak Cornu, don't think it's got all that much of a future. Here I'd uh, put my money on it for another five years at least, uh, but I, 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 we're, currently we're in personal preference. If you like your wines with that little bit of um, uh, bite and edge, drink it now. If you like them smoother and more mellow, uh, give it a, a, a little, little bit more time. But um, it's um, it, uh, you never know when you've got two wines and they're different producers, whether it's the vintage or the producer talking. Here, I think um, it's probably a little bit of both. Um, it feels like this, this is the style that they want to make. 
uh, not a upfront, bloated, um, over over modern claret, um, but a um, a juicy, appetising, refreshing wine, and uh, that's what I find it to be. Um, and um, so I'm going to finish off my glass and uh, say, see you soon.